Dude, have you heard this new Kanye and Jay-Z song? What do you mean it's not new? It came out in 2011. Wait, what do you mean? It is 2011. Who are you? Nah, just kidding. That was like 11 years ago. Anyway, I'd like to say formally to you, we're back again. It's your boy, Spence Brown. Today we're talking about my song, 2011, 2011, whichever you prefer. We're gonna go through how I made it. It's supposed to be themed after like the party songs of that time. It's supposed to have like a whiz currency kind of feel, something where you might go to a house party and have some fun and drink a 40. We're gonna start off with this main pad sound first. I made this sound on my Reface DX. It's a patch called DX Analog that I downloaded from Sound Mondo, which is their website for sharing presets for this thing because I don't know how the fuck to <laughs> FM synthesis. Who knows what that is? Anyways, this pad sounds like this. That's that main pad. Uh, why don't we move on to melodies? There are three melodies in this. We'll start off with the first one, which is this lead. This lead also came out of my Reface DX, and it's actually one of the stock patches. It's called Dime Lead, and it sounds like this. And I've got it on a pancake and some modulation on it just to make it go back and forth. I wanted it to be like very chill and like laid back, you know, dude? So that's the lead. Why don't we move on next to this little pluck right here, which is again, out of the DX. I think this was like around the time that I got the DX and that's why almost all of this is out of the DX itself. So this pluck is made with a little patch called Puddle. And the weird thing actually about this patch is that if you hold it like hits and then it like comes down and then comes back up. But for this, I just, just hit them quickly. Anyways, this pluck sounds like this. Those are all the DX sounds, so of most of the main kind of core of this song was made using the DX, which is so cool to me. I like using external instruments. They're just what they are when you record them. The one last thing to talk about here is this ARP right here. And it's not really there to arpeggiate anything. It's more just there for like atmosphere. It's very high pitched and you may not even notice it if it isn't pointed out to you, but it sounds like this. So it's pretty wild sounding. So it's not very noticeable, but he's hanging out in there, just in the back, you know, just like, it's good. So that's all the main melodic loops. Why don't we move on to, let's do drums. Yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is drums. So for drums, we got a kick, clap, snare, and then we'll talk about the hats as well. We'll leave all this other stuff for the, uh, for the percussion section. So the kick, clap, and snare all sound like this together. And so I have that triangle on every few claps just to kind of accent them. It's not very loud, but it's there. He's just, again, he's just hanging out. He's in the back like, what's, what's good, dude? You feel me? For hats, super simple again. All we got is 16th hat, just like, just like usual. Sounds like this. But again, got this kind of rhythm going in the ARP. I loved using ARP for the hats because you can dial this in, you know what I mean? When you when you draw them in, like, I don't know. I don't like them just like tick, 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 tick. I like them like tick, 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 you know? And then a roll, man. Y'all got to send me a care package of rolls. Kings Hawaiian, hit me up. 
I love you. Anyways, so we got a roll. It sounds like this. So with the other hat, it sounds like this. I about does it for drums, honestly, actually. So next, why don't we talk about the perk? I'm talking about the percussion. We got a few different perk sounds in here. So we got this perk track. We got the whoop. We got the crash. This perk track on its own sounds like this. And so then every eight bars, we have this crash that comes in just to accent the downbeat. And it sounds like this. And then I know you've been dying to know what the whoop is. And there it is. No, I'm just playing. The whoop sounds like this. That's gotta be one of my favorite sounds in the song. You know, you'd hear that on its own and you would think, yeah, that's never gonna be useful. Man, was I wrong. I like to picture the whoop is just like the guy in the back like, whoop. So we got our melodic loops. We got our drums. What's missing, man? I feel like, I feel like it's got a number name, maybe. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the 808. So we got our 808 here. It's pretty simple. It just kind of plays nicely with the kick, you know? Same thing that I usually do, where it's got a sub and a top channel. So nothing new there. Um, I'll just play it for you. This is what the 808 sounds like. And like I said, that plays off the kick quite nicely. They play well together. The kick and the 808 just playing together, you know, just doing their thing, being kids. Man, one day they'll get it, right? I'm forgetting that this section actually has a filter on it, but I feel like this would be like a cool thing to actually talk about. So why don't we move on next to the effects? I tend to do all my projects, all the tracks in one, and that can make it kind of hard to filter the beat. Whereas if you just had the beat in a project and you're just doing vocals over it, it'd be super easy. You just filter the, the two track basically. But the way that I did this was, so all of my tracks tend to go to buses. So like the low stuff goes to a bus, the high stuff goes to a bus, the vocal goes to a bus. And then all those go to the main two bus mix where they get mastered and everything. I made the outputs of the beat buses. So the high and the low bus they go to another bus called beat and then that one goes to the main bus on this beat bus here i have an eq that is automated to move as you come into this section kind of like band pass it so a neat little trick could come in handy and then you know we have these transitions here, which sound like this. Which just add to that overall feel of just like, I don't know, just, it's a vibe. Ty Dolla Sign said it right, it's a vibe. It is. To be honest with you, there's just really not a lot to this one. It's simple like weekend work, it's fun like weekend work, but it's not weekend work. It's my song, 2011. And now I'll show you what everything sounds like together. 1942, sip the scotch, crack a brew. This is really what I'm doing. Uh, nothing more. Uh, 2011, I always will remember. I smoke my first joint and I drink my first bitter. Uh, splendid time, man. I'm at my first time. And I knew I was that dude for the very first time. Let's recall that. And there you have it. That's how you make a song with that mid 2000s kind of feel to it. So I'll tell you a little bit of the background of this real quick too. So 2011 was the year that I moved to California long term basically. Like, hey, you're gonna get a whole history lesson on me now. I was born in upstate New York. We moved to Boston and then we moved to Kansas City. And then for a year we moved to California and then we went back to Missouri and then we went back to California. So 
when we finally ended up kind of like sticking around in California. The year was 2011. I was but a sophomore in high school. I was into skateboarding and rap music and I like to party. I was getting into cameras, man. So there it is. That's my song 2011. That's how it all comes together. It's out everywhere. Been out for a while. You can go stream it wherever you like. If you liked the video, you uh, you have my permission. You can have, you can, you can, you can like the video. You can like the video, just as a treat. You can have a little bit of the like, just as a treat. And if you're here and you aren't subscribed, maybe you should subscribe. I, I would think about it. Obliterate that subscribe button. Just erase it off the face of the planet. It's 2011, I'm Spence Brown. And this has been my song, 2011. I hope you have a great 2012. And I'll see you next year. Peace.